move from price to presentation without confrontation. We've addressed all of the issues in here. See, sometimes when I'm going over stuff, I don't point to it, but it's actually stuff that we cover. When you go through this workbook, you're going to see things like, what are your interest rates? How much will you give me for my trade-in? I already covered one way to address that and do it proactively rather than reactively. But there's four or five different techniques on addressing the trade-in once you have an objection that are in this. Bear in mind, in this workbook, I've included a whole series of CDs. And you're going to get the online training. So when you walk out of here, you're unlimited. So what you can do is you can listen to the CD series day after day after day after day. I've had people that can recite it back better than I can do it because they've listened to it so much. I want to roll through. I want to take you a little ahead because I've covered some of this. I want to take you to this page where it says how to sell more cars without opening your mouth. Kinetics. Kinetics are behavioral patterns. Okay? It says on here, behavioral patterns of nonverbal communication. What page are we on? 46. We talked about proxemics, my little word, relationship of physical distance among people. This is what we're going to get into. How to sell more cars without opening your mouth. Three behavior states. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic. Example. Visual people, they tend to talk faster. They tend to gesture more. I'm a highly visual person. Uh, shopper, I go out and I shop, I can go once a year and go, love it, like it, yes, 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 done, over. Lady in here yesterday, she goes, oh man, I'm kinesthetic. Kinesthetic is touch, feel, experience, gut. She wants to try 50 things on, go to the next store, try 50 things on, take all day, two days, three days. Me, I buy a year's worth, done, visual. See it, like it, yes. Auditory, you communicate and you experience and you buy based upon what you hear. And so auditory people will use words like, I hear what you're saying, that sounds good to me. They will listen more than they will talk and they'll be very succinct in their language. Visual people, faster, gesture more, and they'll use words that match their eyes. They will say, I see what you're saying, that looks good to me. Then kinesthetic people, touch, feel, experience. They want to be able to drive the car, they want to do it, they don't care so much about what you say, they want to experience it. When I learn I'm a high B, I'm a high K, I took some skiing lessons, and all the other people in the group were women. They were high auditory, which women tend to be better auditory than men. <clears throat> we're more visual usually. And I'm not picking up as well as the women. I'm going, wow, they're killing me. And then I said, I got it, B-A-K. I said, guy, I'm a visual person and a kinesthetic, which is experience. So I'll listen to you. But what I would like to do is to be able to watch you a little bit and then fall in behind you first and mimic you to learn experientially. So the second time down versus the first, I picked it up just like that when he was trying to get us. Why? I was matching up my learning style with his teaching style. People all over the country in classes as kids aren't learning, and it's not because they're not bright, it's because a teacher's sitting there on a stool going, turn to page two. And Johnny is not auditory, and he's going, have you ever been there? Okay, you're saying, I'm ready right now, man. <laughs> Stop it. All right, so I'm in Iowa. They said, would you go in on a close on this deal? I said, yes. They said, the manager tried, he couldn't close, salesperson couldn't try, would you do it? So I go in, and it's a two people, a disabled couple, farmer couple, older. And I ask them a question, I say, how'd you like the car? Now, this answer took forever, but it was, Honey, um, what would you say? How do we feel about it? We, uh, we liked it a lot. Uh, we felt it was a really uh, nice car. And, uh, you know, this just went on and on. I'm going like this. And what I'm getting is highly kinesthetic. Everything about him was pausing, halting, touch, feel. And I'm thinking of the salesman, Leonard. 
Leonard was the fastest human being I've ever seen in my life. He wasn't on drugs. You would swear that he was. But Leonard was one of these guys that was like, hey, we, 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 we. and so it flashed in my head. It didn't take me any time to close this deal. Not because it was a great closing skill. It was nothing I did. I think we gave them a credit for $250 for a tire that didn't work on the last car they bought at the dealership. They never got reimbursed. They had a little sore spot. Found that out, gave it to them, closed, done. Still a nice gross profit. I walk in, they said, man, you must be awesome. We tried and tried and tried, couldn't close the deal. What'd you do? I said, nothing to do with any skill set as far as closing. But let me explain to you. Here's what it is. I want you, Leonard, to do this for me. I want you to recite Mary Had a Little Lamb. He said, what? What I got to do with Mary Had a Little Lamb? What else I got to do with the day? He's going like that, you know? And I said, slow down for a second. Recite Mary Had a Little Lamb exactly as you do it. Mary Had a Little Lamb, please, why so? What are we doing? <laughs> I said, all right, now do this. Do Mary Had a Little Lamb exactly the way your customers in there would do it. Mary. I said, do you see where I'm going with this? He said, did I scare him? I said, just a little. <laughs> These people were freaking out. And when I walked out of that room, I'll never forget, this retired, disabled farmer gentleman, older, grabbed me like this. I'm walking out. I'm desperate, man. This guy was stronger than death. I looked, and I said, yes, sir. And he goes, Mark, um, don't get me wrong. We we feel like we, we like Leonard okay, but... Could you finish up the deal for us? We'd feel a little more comfortable. I said, shoot. Right? And so what I knew right then and there was it was just oil and water. But if he could have just changed pace a little bit and recognized. Let me ask you a question. This morning when you got up first thing, what would you do? Okay. What was it? When you got out of bed, second thing you was going to do. You did. Okay, third thing when you, when, that you did when you got out of bed. What was the third thing you did? Okay, that's what I was looking for. Something that you took action on. Now, she gave me a couple of canned answers almost at the beginning. The third answer she gave me, which is good by the way, the third answer she gave me was the actual action she took, which was she did something. But when I asked her a question, she looked to the side. And to the side that she looked on told me that she was in an auditory state. When people are in a visual state, they look up. If you ask them a question, was this the right car for you? And they look up, they're in a visual state. They look down, they're in a kinesthetic state. If they look to the side, they're in an auditory state. What does that tell me if I'm working with a customer in a situation? Now it goes a lot deeper than that if you really study it, but that's just simple. Looking up, visual, what should I do? Talk a little faster, gesture a little more, quick decisions. If it's kinesthetic, what should I do? Slow down, pause, do what? Have them touch something, experience something, grab something. Yeah. <laughs> Auditory, communicate and have them communicate back to you. Ask them, what do you think? What would you say about this? Does that make sense? See, often we're thinking it's about numbers. It has nothing to do with it. It's people skills. People buy from people. It's how you communicate with people that makes the difference. Voice, tone, inflection, body language, and words and content. Four ways people communicate. <coughs> there was a study done at UCLA, and people often misquote it, but I think it was Sarkeesian was the professor at UCLA. And what he surmised was the majority of your communication does not have anything to do with the words. What it has to do is the combination of your voice, tone, inflection, and body language. I'm going to share with you some body language tips. Can I um, borrow your chair? I hate to displace you for a second, but I want to borrow your chair. I don't have an empty one right here. When a man sits down, he's tearing things up, man, just because I got him out of his chair. Relax, man. Uh, a man sits down, and he puts where he crosses his legs at his ankle. That's just a comfortable sign. There's nothing wrong with that. But you will find often when a man crosses his legs at his knee, not so good. What he'll do often, and check me on this, he will lean back, turn sideways, and almost always, not always, but almost always towards the exit. And it's a very defensive 
mechanism that he's using his body language and conveying to you that he doesn't realize. It's almost a cocky position. So what I would invite you to do, if you sit down and a man is like this, you do it too. You want to mirror image, not mimic. Do this. What do you not want to talk about right now? Money at all. Money. I do want to talk about anything else that could get us on common ground. And if I see him, meaning he's giving me direct eye contact, smiling, communicating, opening up. If after, I may have to get him out of his seat, get him back to the car. But if I see him opening up, I will do this. I'll grab the piece of paper or my proposal and I'll slowly say, if you would, pull up, let's take a look at the proposal. And I'll pull up and put my elbows on the desk. Look him in the eye, and if he is following me and connecting with me, what will he do? The exact same. 